Thank you, Raul. Thank you for ASMB Sages for the kind invitation. I probably, for me, this is one of the most controversial topics before or after bariatric surgery, not only for the sleeve. This is my disclosures. Mm, I think after every procedure we do a bariatric, you can have reflux. And you need to understand that after the different procedures, you can have some kind of different type of reflux and probably the management will be different. And there are many reasons. We are working specifically very close to the G junction and most of the time we destroy some of the mechanisms. But there's some things you need to understand also. We have an incidence in our morbid obese population that reach up to 36% of GERD. So almost one of every three of our patients already is having a reflux. And this is also very important that is so prevalent that it's one of the comorbidities you can, you can use that will be related to, to uh, get approval for the procedure. But this is also very important to me. And this is why a lot of our patients improve their reflux after bariatric surgery. It's because there is a very good relation that if you maintain a normal BMI, you reduce the likelihood of uh, developing reflux and his complications. So weight loss is a big component of reflux uh, of our surgery. But we know a lot of things, and this is one of my, uh, I would say, biggest concerns. There are a couple of studies that they will tell you that even in 100% asymptomatic patients, if you scope them, you will find in a lot of them problems with the esophagus, reflux, not cracker esophagus. So when we discuss that we shouldn't do endoscopy to everybody, I think this is one of the topic that between the societies like ASMBS, SAGES, etc., we need to approach this seriously and decide what is the significant to do endoscopy before. But uh, I've been asked to discuss is the new problem, reflux after bariatric surgery. So we know that, again, after every bariatric surgery, you're going to get reflux. Probably the most controversial and the one we see most common now is after the sleeve. And if you read the literature, you will find that it's been published up to 40% of patients that can have reflux. Uh, and patients that have reflux before, a fair amount of them after the sleeve will keep having the reflux. Sometimes even the incidence increases up to one or two years. Why? Many reasons. High pressure system, there is an increased resistance to the emptying of, of the esophagus. So it should be contraindicated. This is not my topic. I'm going to discuss it because that will be an indication, not a after reflux. But we know from publication from Raoul's group and the Israelis that this is a high pressure system. So the question we've been asking ourselves itself, the sleeve gastrectomy can produce reflux? And I think, yes, it does. Uh, and I'm, I have a little concern about doing severe reflux to this patient. But we also know this. There is a, a, a fair amount of publication that will show you that there is near reflux after the sleeve and that the reflux that was before can increase but also can decrease. And I think the decrease in reflux after the sleeve is related to the weight loss more than the sleeve itself but with the bypass is related to the weight loss plus the effect of the bypass in reflux. So I can show you publication and publications, but we know that all these problems with reflux after the sleeve, if there is not a structural anatomical problem with the sleeve, they will disappear up to three years. So it's very easy to ask the patients to be patient, but even I recall a patient of mine that that was seen by is Raul. She said, I weight loss, I'm very happy. I lost all my excessive weight loss, but I cannot tolerate this reflux anymore. So Raul sent it back to me to change it for a bypass. I couldn't convince it to wait for three years, so that tells you how difficult the problem is sometimes. This publication for JAMA, uh, 2014, is one of the more serious publications that will tell you that we need to be very careful with reflux in our patients. So they, they showed that 70% of the patient with the sleeve had no resolution of symptoms compared with only 5% that they didn't have resolution in the bypass. So I think it's a very important to read. And they show you the tables and the graphics, how they noticed that. But also, 
August 2010, for manasol surgery, there was also a concern of the quality of life of this patient. But I think, and I will try to be as fair as possible here, I think we didn't know much about waiting these two, three years, and we were much more concerned at the beginning of that, the problems they bring. But look at this. This is a very interesting paper, again, from JAMA 2014, that will show you, if you pay attention to this table, what happened with reflux, and look at this, a very good amount of patients. If there were resolution when they have it before. But also, if you have reflux, do they have an impact in complications after the sleeve or the bypass? Do they have any influence in the weight loss failure? And you are surprised, because if you have a severe or significant reflux before, you have more complication and your weight loss is not as good as you didn't have reflux before the sleeve. So that is another factor. It's not only the Barrett, it's not only the reflux, it's not only that we're going to increase the reflux, but also this paper, and this is one of the conclusions, that if you have GERD before the sleeve, predicts a higher complication revision, poorer performance for resolution of comorbidities, and for weight loss. And we need to pay attention to that. Of course, if we remove all our patients with reflux of the sleeve, we will remove 60% of the population because that's the number we have. So we need to define better what is significant or severe GERD, and in my case, make it a, a, a contraindication for the sleeve, or a suggestion, at least, to move to another one. So this says, and there's another paper, that most of the surgeons believe that the hiatal hernia has to be repaired. Look for it and repair it. But there are a couple of papers that will tell you that the hiatal hernia repair is only 9% of the process uh, of uh, reflux. It's not, I mean, if we close the hiatal hernia in a patient with reflux, you are not doing much. The reason, like some people like me, close the hiatus is because I want to prevent my sleeve going back to the chest. Because when they leak in the chest, we get the gastropleural and gastrobronchial fistulas that they are much more worse than the leaks on the abdomen. But it's not to prevent reflux. So I think it's a confusion we have. Reflux have many other components. One is the repair of the hiatal hernia. So what we do with our patient after the sleep? I'm trying to convince them all to wait two years with PPIs. A lot of them accept, understanding that that three or four percent in our experience that get GERD after the sleep, because we try to select this patient a, a, a little bit stronger from the GERD side before. If I don't convince them I they want surgery, I try to postpone the surgery because most of the patients that come to our group for a sleep is because they don't want a bypass. So we've been using some of the radio frequency and it's been working well. It didn't work well for us for reflux as primary, but it's working better. For, a, for our patients with reflux after the sleep. So if that works, they will wait. Even if it's come back, they will wait these two years. If they accept the PPIs two years, we'll wait. Otherwise, we move to that one and a few of them end up in bypasses. <coughs> this is also another interesting paper. We move into the gastric bypass. So we never heard before this discussion how many patients with bypass get reflux, but they do. And they do a lot. And we know that they get reflux because they have hiatal hernia. Sometimes the bypass goes to the chest, the pouch dilates, then you have like a big fundus in, in the pouch. That will all promote reflux. So what to do with them? Because if the bypass is the best operation for the reflux, what to do with them? But we know that moving sleeve to bypass, as in this case, you do a bypass for GERD, they're going to improve with this one. But what happens when you do it afterward? Should we go back, bring the, the, the pouch back to the abdomen, repair the hiatus, remove the fundus from, from the pouch? Is that enough? In our experience, it's been enough in most of cases, but not in all of cases. So what do you do with those patients? And again, my experience with the straight in those patients, probably Samir will tell us better, but it, it was not that good as it was with the sleeve. So what do you do for those patients? So I read about it, I heard about it, I saw about it, but we haven't tried it yet. But this publication, and this is 
cases from the groups of Newton Kawahara in Brazil and Kevin Higa in Fresno, that they go back and they do a nissen with the remanent over the bypass to treat reflux after the, the, the bypass. So I asked Kelvin twice, how do you know it's not close the hiatus, bring in this, the pouch back, and you're nissen? So they published this, 71 patients from 2008 to 13. 23 of those patients, five year follow up, pre and post phone duplication. Uh, a scores, especially of quality of life. And 18 patients were very satisfied with symptoms, 78. Four, no, 17%. One, nothing. Like, and six patients needed to be converted for dysphagia. And that was my other question. If I'm gonna bring to all of these patients that have some problem of motility, and you're gonna wrap them with the remanent, uh, is that a problem or is not that a problem? So that, 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 that's an interesting question. So, I asked him to lend me one of his videos because I don't do that yet and I wanted to do it. So they bring back again, of course, two, three centimeters of the esophagus to the abdominal cavity. They do a very good dissection, posterior repair uh, of the hiatus as it should be for every hernia repair. Uh, and this is something very good that probably I, I heard from Raul the first time, but probably other people tell it. We use using barb sutures now to close the hiatus, and it's work, working very well. We don't need to use no mesh, no, nothing else to support it. And then you look for the remanent. You remove whatever additions you have. And sometimes when you do this, some part of the remanent doesn't look that good. Sometimes you can stable them if you want. But the whole idea is you use that remanent as your application uh, organ, as you can see here. You can calibrate with any bougie that you use in your regular reflux. We use 50, <clears throat> but I highly recommend calibration. Remember, they have patients that ended up to change this for a toupee because it, they were with dysphagia. And imagine you do a, a bypass, you go back to repair for the reflux, and now you have to come back to undo the application to convert it to a partial application. But this is an interesting technique. They're very happy with that one. There is another group that's trying to do the same with the ligament of the liver. But again, that one didn't work for our primary. So uh, I don't like to experiment something that it didn't work before, but the Nissen worked for us in our primaries. So using the remanent, it doesn't seem like a crazy idea. I think it's not a bad idea. And uh, we're gonna wait for the results. I asked Kelvin if we can do uh, work together comparing not using the remanent and only bringing the, the pouch back to the abdomen and repair the hiatus versus doing the whole complete operation and see if there is a difference. So for me, in conclusion, this is a problem that we haven't solved, but I think we need to start to solve it before taking the patients to bariatric surgery and not have to solve it after bariatric surgery. Thank you very much.